All right, guys, so in this example here, we have a tank with a volume of 0 0.01 cubic meters, and it's initially evacuated, meaning there's no mass in that tank. We have a pinhole developed in the wall of the tank, and then air from the outside comes inside of the tank, and the air outside is 21 degrees Celsius and one bar, and it enters until the tank is equal in, in pressure being one bar. So in other words, the tank will have a pinhole like such, and air is going to enter inside of it, and the volume of this tank while we're at it is 0 0.01 cubic meters, and then we're going to have outside air, and it's going to enter at a temperature and a pressure of 21 degrees Celsius and one bar. And then when that's all said and done and it's finished entering, we'll have a pressure of one bar inside of the tank. We're also told that the final temperature in the tank will be 21 degrees Celsius, so we'll also have a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius inside of the tank, and we'll call these states 2, because it's after the fact, so we'll call this here state 1. And we're looking for the final mass inside of the tank in grams, so we want whatever's inside of here in grams, so some number in grams. And we're looking for the heat transfer coming in or out of the tank, uh, between the tank and the surroundings. So we'll do something like this, and we'll say that we're looking for Q and some number in kilojoules. So for part A, what I like to call the easy part of this problem, basically what you have is you have the ideal gas law where you have PV equals MRT. And it's pretty easy because we know that air is treated as an ideal gas. When you see air, you should always think ideal gas because sometimes you'll forget that you have it and you'll spend a lot of time trying to figure out something as simple as using this, this equation here. So when we use the ideal gas law, you typically want our pressure to be in kilopascals. So we'll convert our uh, pressure into kilopascals. So we'll have one bar is 100 kilopascals. And our volume, we were told, was 0 0.01 cubic meters. We can leave that in cubic meters. Set that equal to your mass times your gas constant. So your gas constant, if you recall, equals your universal gas constant. Divide that by your molar mass of air. And you'll find that your universal gas constant is 8.314. You know, and that is kilojoules per kilomole Kelvin. Divide that by your molar mass of air, which is 28.97. And unit for that is kilograms per kilomole. All right, so if you see the kilomoles will cancel out, cross those out, and you're going to be left with kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So you'll have that your gas constant, if you plug this into your calculator, equals 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we'll plug that in here. 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Running out of room here. Times your temperature. Your temperature should be in Kelvin. Um, so if you have 21 degrees Celsius, well, that just equals 294 Kelvin. All right, so now you have uh, everything from the ideal gas law except for your mass. So when you solve for your mass, you're going to find that you're going to have it in kilograms. So plug this into your calculator, and you'll find that your mass equals 0 0.01185 kilograms. To get from kilograms to grams, multiply by 1,000, and you're just going to have 11.85 grams. And that's your answer to part A. Now for part B, which is definitely the more complicated part of this problem, we're going to look for the heat transfer between the tank and the surroundings. So you might be tempted to use the first law of thermodynamics and just say that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power uh, plus your mass flow rate times your change in enthalpy and kinetic energy and potential energy. Um, but you can't actually do that in this instance because this is not actually at steady state. Uh, in other words, your total change in energy with respect to time is not equal to zero because it's constantly changing your your uh, properties in this process are constantly, your system, I should say, your system's properties are constantly changing um, until equilibrium is found between the outside pressure and inside pressure. 
So because the pressure and the amount of air inside of this tank uh, is not constant and it's changing with respect to time, we're going to use a something similar to the standard energy balance equation that we're used to seeing, but we're going to say that uh, the change in energy with respect to time equals your heat transfer minus your power plus your inlet mass flow rate times your inlet enthalpy plus your kinetic energy sorry to be v inlet squared over two plus gzi and then you're going to subtract your exit as you may remember times h out plus v out squared over two plus gz out so now you're probably looking at this and saying like, well, why do I have a derivative on the left here and I have everything else I'm used to seeing on the right? So we're going to uh, bear with me and we'll break this down. So your change in total energy with respect to time can be broken down. If you recall, it equals three things. Your uh, change in internal energy with respect to time plus your change in kinetic energy with respect to time interchange in potential energy with respect to time now you can go ahead and cross out your kinetic and potential energy because those are neglected so we'll go ahead and do that up here as well so kinetic and potential energy are neglected and now what else can we do to simplify this expression here well we don't have a shaft or an electric motor so we can go ahead and cancel out our power and also we have a basically a void being filled with air, and once there's enough pressure in here to be equal to the pressure outside of the tank, no more is going to be transferred, so we only have an inlet mass, but not an exit mass. So I'll go ahead and cancel out our mass flow rate here, but it's multiplied by everything here, so everything there gets canceled out. So when we account for all this, we'll have that our change in internal energy with respect to time equals our heat transfer plus our mass flow rate coming in, times our enthalpy coming in. Now, if I want to undo this derivative here, I would have to integrate, right? And if I want to integrate, it's going to get me the initial and final states of the specific internal energy times the difference in mass. Um, so I'd have to find that difference in mass. And so to, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this a little bit here with this m dot in. So we do have an m dot in, but we do not have an m dot out. m dot out is equal to zero. So what I'll do is I'll imaginarily add m dot out over here. And if I were to do it to the other side, it would really just be plus zero, right? So I'm just not going to do that at all. And so now I have du dt equals heat transfer plus m dot i h i plus m dot out. Now, I just went ahead and rearranged this expression into what you see right here. It doesn't really matter what I do with this if I add or subtract it because it's equal to zero. I just wanted to get this format here of m dot i minus m dot out because now what I can do is I can uh, define that with the derivative of the mass with respect to time. So now I have the uh, change in internal energy with respect to time equals and as you can tell it would also be the same for that heat transfer so i'll have a derivative or change in heat transfer with respect to time plus your change in mass with respect to time between of course your initial and final states uh, times your enthalpy so now we can go ahead and do our integration here and we're going to have that the internal energy is equal to m2 u2 that's a lowercase there minus m1 u1 and this is of course between state one and state two of the tank and this is equal to your heat transfer plus your m dot one or sorry m dot two minus m dot one which is your change in uh, mass in the tank times your enthalpy now, we shouldn't really have an HI when we're dealing with 1s and 2s because this would mean that we're working with an open system. This means we're working with a closed system. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace it with a constant, which could have been done prior to integration. And if you're looking at air uh, at 294 Kelvin, the enthalpy according to the property tables would just be 294.17 kilojoules 
per kilogram. So that's your uh, enthalpy, which of course you can pull outside of the integration when you do integrate for your mass flow rate or your uh, change in mass with respect to time. So we can go ahead and carry that over here as well. And we'll have 294.17 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we're looking at the tank. We're specifically looking at the tank here. So what can we simplify from this expression? Well, uh, at initially, this tank was actually uh, evacuated, right? So therefore, we can cancel out anything that has a 1 in front of it, because U1 would be 0, there was no mass in the tank, and there was also no energy as a result. So we can uh, cancel that out of both sides here. And now we can simplify this expression into M2U2 equals the heat transfer plus 294.17 times M2. Now we have our mass is 11.85, which we, or we'll use uh, kilograms here. We have 0 0.01185 kilograms, which we solved for in part A. So let's go ahead and rearrange for our heat transfer. And we'll have the heat transfer equals M2U2 minus 294.17 times M2. Like I said, you'll have your heat transfer equal to uh, 0 0.01185 kilograms. And I'm going to actually just pull out the M2 and distribute it to U2 in 294.17. So we'll have 0 0.1185 kilograms times your U2. And what is your U2? Well, it's equal to 209.77 kilojoules per kilogram, according to the property table for air at 294 Kelvin. Now you're going to subtract your 294 0.17, which was your enthalpy, and that's kilojoules per kilogram as well. Now you'll notice that you can multiply out in your kilogram, will cancel out with your kilograms, and you're left with kilojoules here. Multiply all this out, and you're going to have just about negative one kilojoule of heat transferring out of the tank to the surroundings.